There is little doubt that computer vision has a very wide application in robotics. However, in EC470, we only cover very little about it. Specifically, in lectures, we focus more on the camera model and calibration. And in labs, we practice in very limited amounts with the OpenCV package. In this video, I'm going to introduce several common tasks of computer vision and their solutions. So the most popular problem of computer vision is classification. The definition of this problem is very straightforward. We have an input image, either RGB or grayscale, and we are trying to determine the type of the single object showing in the image. Since this problem has existed out there for many years, there have been many methods proposed. I'm going to introduce three of them. The first algorithm is um, perception algorithm. For example, we can treat each pixel of the image as a feature. For each pixel, we multiply a bit. The perception algorithm is used to learn this way so that we can properly classify the image. In this case, our decision function is the weighted sum of pixel values of the image. We then pass the output of this linear function through some activation nonlinear function for the final predicted label. I also provided a pseudocode as you can see here. It's a pretty simple but feasible idea. The second algorithm I'm going to introduce is logistic regression. The difference of logistic regression compared to perception algorithm is that logistic regression has a differentiable activation function. We generally optimize over the cross entropy loss and use sigmoid for the activation function. Here's a quick summary for what I just said. For the classification problem, the third algorithm I'm going to introduce is neural network. According to Newton, a neural network can approximate any function based upon the fundamental theorem of calculus. As you can see here in our example, we have a three layer neural network. The input layer corresponds to our input features. We also have a hidden layer, and the output of the output layers are just the predicted labels or whatever values we want to calculate. At each neuron, we apply a nonlinear activation function. Several common activation functions are ReLU, Sigmoid, and Tanj. On each arc of the neural network, we apply a linear function, a weighted sum of the um, features. The most revolutionary point of the neural network is that it provides a way for people to learn nonlinear function. Before the neural network came out, people couldn't learn XOR function. The training algorithm we use to train the neural network is called backpropagation. Since it's a little bit complicated, I'm not going to expand it here. As time goes on, people are thinking, why we couldn't add more layers and neurons to the neural network? So here came the deep neural net and also the deep learning. And um, there are also more structures of the neural network, for example, this convolutional neural network, which is very commonly used in computer vision. The reason why it's um, so useful in computer vision because it has a um, convolutional layer. The output of the convolutional layers are called the feature maps. And um, so basically, um, how we generate the feature maps are so, um, we take a, so we take the convolution of the input image with a bunch of kernels. And each kernel is going to focus on different structure information of the input image. For example, we might care uh, how sharp are the edges of these images and um, uh, how many horizontal lines, how many vertical lines are there in the image. And so besides this convolutional layer, um, the remaining part of this uh, CNN is the same as the fully connecting layer. There are also other interesting tasks besides classification. For example, um, semantic segmentation and uh, classification and localization, object detection and the instant segmentation. So, um, I'm going to first introduce the semantic segmentation. The definition of the semantic segmentation problem is that we are trying to provide a mask for each object type showing in the image. The shortcoming of this algorithm is that it does not distinguish the instances of each object type. So the general method used for the semantic segmentation problem is we pass it, so we pass the input image through a bunch of convolutional layers. And um, since a series of convolutional layers could be computationally expensive, we might also uh, consider adding some downsampling and upsampling layers in between. And the second task is classification and localization. So besides classification, we are also trying to predict the relative position of this object in the image. And the concept of the solution is also pretty straightforward. For our base neural network, we are going to add another set of um, output, to the box coordinates, which specify the bounding box of the object in the image. And since one is a classification problem, one is a regression problem, we are going to use two loss functions for each. For example, we can use a cross entropy loss for the classification and a L2 loss for the regression problem. 
And the object detection problem is like a more difficult version of the localization problem because there are multiple objects shown in the image. And it's a very challenging task. Um, people working in computer vision spent many years to find the solution for this. And um, many solutions posted on the early stage of solving this problem are all very computationally expensive until the region proposal based method came out. The region proposal is basically to propose a bunch of regions of interest where the object might locate. And um, for each region of interest, we run a classifier to, to determine the type of object showing inside this little bounding box. Thanks for watching. This is the end of this tutorial video. And if you are interested in the materials cover, you can take EC549, which is the graduate level computer vision course. And uh, if you are planning to learn ahead, you can um, watch CS230, um, 231 from Stanford University. Um, and the videos are available on YouTube.